good morning i have come with the explanation computation of income from other sources so i told you we have five heads of income income from salary income from house property income from business or profession income from capital gain and income from other sources so we have learned other four heads of income salary house property business or profession and capital gains so if an item is not able to tax under these four heads of income it will come in income from other sources say for example it's a, uh, it's an income from lottery it is not salary income it's not house property income it's not business or profession it's not capital gain so that will come in the income from other sources similarly bank interest dividend all these items will come under income from other sources so this is a theoretical concept so two modules this chapter is a small chapter and it's a very simple Uh, chapter so i am going to explain this chapter with the help of just two modules module 10.1 to explain the theoretical concepts and 10.2 to explain the problems so it's a very simple chapter and you will find it really simple so incomes charged under this head of income i told you if an item if it's not possible to charge under any other heads of income the other four heads of income salary house property income from business or profession or capital gain it will come under income from other sources so to get an example to get an idea you have to i have to you should know that which all items are taxed under this head of income one is dividend second one is winnings from lotteries third is employees contribution towards staff welfare scheme see some staff welfare scheme will be there for every organization so this is just for the welfare of the employees sometimes they may be giving loan from the staff welfare fund or sometimes they will be celebrating the festivals so all this any contribution any contribution towards staff welfare scheme now interest on securities debenture interest or any government security interest if you getting that also will be included in this head of income now next is rental income of machinery plant or furniture so here you have to remember that if rental income from machinery sometimes the builders they will take machinery see jcb or concrete mixer and all they may take it on rent till they will complete the construction so machinery plant or furniture if they are taking it on rent the rental income so that is the rental income can also be one head of income one item of income which we will charge in the income from other sources sometimes you have seen that fully furnished apartment we will get for rent so that meaning it will be fully furnished all the furniture everything will be there so if it's rental income for that furniture if they are charging so it will come under income from other sources now rental income of let out plant machinery or furniture along with the building and if the two are not separable so in this case also income from if this income will be coming under income from other sources a building it's fully furnished and plant machinery furniture or if it's an industrial unit along with the building they had put that so that is the rental income also will come under this head of income now some received under key man insurance scheme you know that what is key man insurance scheme key man insurance scheme is please you have to remember that key man insurance scheme that is see in the case of top employees of the organization organization will always try to protect their life so what they will do they will take special insurance policy for those people so that is the key man insurance scheme so any amount any compensation if something happens to their life insurance company will pay huge compensation because their contribution to the organization is really important so in that case the any amount received under key man insurance policy will be taxed under this head of income you have to remember that lic policy matured that is exempt from tax uh, dividend from indian companies it's exempt from tax but this is amount received under key man insurance policy now gifts you know that gifts from relatives it's exempted we are coming into the detail of that the gifts more than 50000 will be taxable under this head so which all gifts will take and all i'm going to explain that again separately now any advance received again sale of capital asset and forfeited this i have explained in capital gain chapter also see if they uh, entered into a transaction for sale of a house property now uh, if the transaction has not materialized if the advance money is paid so you have to remember that when advance money is paid the seller is not in 
they, he, it's his right to retain that money. Most of the cases when the transaction is not happening, they will not return the advance money they receive. So that is the advance received against the sale of capital asset. And forfeited meaning the transaction did not materialize. So what will happen? I told you up to 1st April 2014. If this happened, we are reducing this advance amount from the cost price. We have worked out problems also. See, after April 1st, 2014, if this happened, we are showing it in the income from other sources. So that is why it's included under income from other sources. Now, uh, diagrammatic explanation of two different types of securities you have to remember because I have told you security interest will be there. So one is government security and second one is commercial security. So the distinction is clear between government security and commercial security. Government security is completely issued by government. Either it can be central government or state government or any statutory body, anything like that. RBI or anybody is issuing the security. So here why government has to issue securities? Sometimes they will finance the infrastructure uh, amount they will collect like that. National Highways Authority of India, they are issuing. Rural Electrification Corporation of India, they are issuing securities. Sometimes for funding the deficit finance, deficit budget. Then sometimes for military operations. So all these cases government needs fund. So they will raise by selling the securities. So two types of government securities are there, tax free. The name itself means it's exempted. I'm giving you a complete list of tax-free securities for your reference. Now, less tax meaning, see already the TDS. TDS is paid by the issuing organization. So, we will get as a net amount only. So, we have to gross up that. That is the explanation given. Less tax, taxable, but do not gross up. See, the rule is grossing up of securities. It's coming. And along with the problem, I will explain. Just remember, if it's a government security, if it is tax free, it's exempted from tax. You don't have to include that in the computation. But if it's less tax, it will be taxable, but do not gross up. Whatever value given in the question, we can do the calculation. So that is the meaning. Again, when we will do the problems, I'll make it clear. Now, second one is commercial securities. Commercial securities also we are dividing into two. One is tax free. So tax free meaning exempted from tax. So this, if the commercial security, commercial securities meaning it will be companies issuing that. Companies issuing, you have to remember that tax free means it's always, though it is mentioned tax free, it's always taxable. And you have to always gross that security also. So when we will do this, the, do the problems, I'll make it more clear. So please remember commercial security, tax free meaning it will be always taxable and you have to always gross that value also. No less tax meaning taxable, gross only when the amount received is given. See two methods of see. They will say that 1000 rupees is received as received as interest or 10% interest for that security. So two ways of giving the explanation or giving the information in the question. So if the gross, if you, you have to do the grossing, if I told you like 1000 rupees for the security, the person assessing has received. That meaning then you have to do the grossing. But if it's given that 10% is the rate of interest for that security, then you don't have to do the grossing. This rule is very, very important. So you have to remember this diagrammatic representation for government securities and commercial securities. Now, meaning of interest. These are all two more questions. That is why I have included that in the explanation. Please remember, I know that you all will know this, what is interest and all. So three points I have explained. If you get a two more question, you can write this. Interest is the return which a person receives from another person for bearing the risk of parting with the money. See, I will go and deposit if I have some savings in the bank. What is my benefit? I will get some interest. So that is the, I am parting with my money. My savings, I am going and depositing in the bank. Second point is, losing that income which you would have received on such money if you had deposited in a bank. See, instead of bank interest, you know that they are giving only less rate of interest. But if I would have invested in stock market, I would have got a higher interest. So that is the advantage. I am taking a decision to deposit it in the bank expecting some interest. I don't want to take any risk. Whereas if I'm investing in a stock market, I may be getting better returns, but I'm taking some risk. Now it simply means the return received by a creditor who has given his money as debt. So that meaning for time being, I'm giving that money as debt to the bank or to the stock market, whatever be that. So that is the meaning of interest. Now meaning of security. What is a security? So these are all important for two marks. 
So security is a document acknowledging the date taken by a specific authority from general public. See, for example, if any company, ITC company is issuing a security, their company name will be there, company logo will be there. In that only they will issue the share certificate. So that is the, it's companies acknowledging that, techno, companies acknowledging the debt taken by a specific authority. That is, whether it's government or a company, all the details of that information will be there in that document. Now, it may be named as a debt. We can call it as a debt because that person investing, he is parting with the money. He is giving it to the company as a debt or a loan or a paper or debenture or security or a certificate. It can be anything, national saving certificates for government. That meaning, it's a certificate given by the government. After six years, you can collect this money. Now, it is secured in some manner. Some security is there. That is why people invest in the stock market. Now, contents of security. What all will be included in a security? Face value of the security, whether it is 10 rupees or 100 rupees or 1000 rupees, whatever be that, they will mention that. Date of maturity. When it's going to mature, 5 years, 6 years, 3 years, whatever be that, they will mention. Rate of interest. What will be the rate of interest payable? 8% or 10%, whatever be that. Then date, place and period of payment of interest. So when you are going to get the, on the maturity date, where you are going to get this payment? The date of payment will be there, where you will get that and how many, what is the duration? You have to wait for that. So all this or where you will, can collect the interest. So all these details will be there. Now, who can issue a security? The central government can issue a security. State government can issue a security, I told you. Government will issue for infrastructure details, infrastructure requirements, military operations, financing the deficit budget. All this, they require funds. So they will raise the securities, uh, raise money through selling the securities. Local authority like corporation, BDA, panchayat, municipality, anybody can issue or a company can issue or a statutory corporation like RBI or they can issue the security. Now types of securities. One is exempted from tax, completely exempted from tax. I'm going to give the list. Tax-free securities. Tax-free securities we have learned in the commercial security. Commercial security meaning tax-free but always taxable. The name tax-free will be there. Students will get confused with that. Tax-free commercial securities always taxable. Now tax-free government securities. This is exempted from tax. I showed you the diagrammatic representation also. Now less tax securities meaning TDS. Tax deducted at source is paid by the issuing authority. Now, exempted from tax, I am giving the list. If these items are there in the question, you don't have to include that in the computation. This, what all usual items will come, I will explain when I am doing the problems. National plan certificate, national defense bonds, treasury saving deposit certificates, special bearer bonds 1991. This is one usual item that will be there in the question. 10% secured redeemable NTPC bonds, 1986 per series. Next is 10% secured redeemable non-convertible bonds issued by MTNL. Now, 10% secured redeemable non-convertible bonds issued by Indian Railway Finance Corporation Limited. Now, you know that government is going for privatization and all. So, that Indian government, Indian Railway Finance Corporation Limited. Now, 9% secured redeemable non-convertible bonds 1987 B series issued by National Hydroelectric Power Corporation Limited. Next is 9% secured redeemable non-convertible bonds issued by Indian Railways Finance Corporation Limited. So, you can remember, it's not easy to remember all that, but I will tell you which all usual items that will appear in the problems. 9% tax-free. We have, we have already learned what is tax-free, less tax, all this. 9% tax-free secured redeemable bonds issued by the Power Finance Corporation of India government. Now, 10% tax-free secured redeemable non-convertible bonds issued by Indian Telephone Industries Limited. Non-convertible. Now, 10 years, 9% tax-free secured redeemable non-convertible NTPC, National Thermal Power Corporation bonds, fourth issue, private placement. Private placement meaning only for few individuals, selected individuals, the Securities will be circulated and it will not be for public circulation. Now, 10 years, 9% tax-free secured redeemable non-convertible PFC bonds. Second series, private placement issued by Power Finance Corporation. See, PFC is the Power Finance Corporation Limited. Now, 10 years, 9% tax-free secured redeemable non-convertible REC, Rural Electrification Corporation bonds issued by Rural Electrification Corporation Limited. 
This we have learned in capital gain chapter also. 10 years, 9% tax-free, secured, redeemable, non-convertible bonds, C-series, issued by Navely Lignite Corporation Limited, again at the government sector. Now, 7% capital investment bonds, 6.5%, 8%, 9% or 10% national relief bonds. Now, tax-free securities. Tax-free securities I have explained when at the government sector and at the commercial securities. So, for the government sector also I have explained. And for commercial securities also explained. So tax-free securities divided into three. Tax-free commercial. Commercial meaning issued by companies. It's non-government securities. Tax-free government securities. Tax-free securities issued by the government. See if it's government, it is exempted. It's by com companies, it will be taxable. Now less tax securities, I told you, it's TDS is paid by the issuing authority. If a company is issuing less tax security, meaning TDS, tax deducted at source will be paid by the company. If TDS, less tax security is issued by government, meaning government will be paying the tax deducted at source for the SSE. Now, tax-free commercial non-government securities. So, this, what is the meaning? It's issued by a statutory corporation, company or local authority. It can be RBI, Power Finance Corporation, Rural Electrification Corporation or any company, any local authority, corporation, municipality, panchayat, anything. It can be debenture or bonds. There are these are not tax-free securities. Please remember that these are not tax-free. Only commercial. Commercial meaning I showed you in the diagram also it will be always taxable. Tax for these securities is paid by the issuing authority. So I told you already that is the meaning. Tax is already paid by the issuing authority. So tax is paid on behalf of the investors. So investors are getting the benefit. They don't have to pay the tax. Whoever issuing the security, they will pay the tax. Interest received by the investor is net interest. So, whatever the investor is getting, that will be the net interest. So, net interest is after tax is deducted at source. So, you have to gross this value. I have explained in the diagram also. Now, process of finding the gross interest from the net interest is called grossing up. This is important for two months. The equation also, what is grossing? Grossing meaning when you are getting net interest, you know that every value we are taking at the gross. See, I told you when I taught salary also. If you are getting net salary, we have worked out problems, net salary after deducting provident fund, housing loan, group insurance, all these values will be there. So we will not calculate salary, taxable tax salary from net salary. We always want to calculate the gross salary. Same here also, in the case of interest, in, we will not take the net interest. We will always calculate the gross interest. So gross interest, how we calculate net interest? Interest received into 100 divided by 100 minus rate of tax. Rate of tax, two rates you have to remember, 10% and 30%. I have explained it in a table also in a later slide. 10% is the usual rate for interest, dividend, everything. 30% if it's a casual income like lottery income, crossword puzzles, race holes, everything, 30%. Casual income, you have to take 30% and 10%. You have to remember these two rates. Now, tax-free government securities. These are all important questions for two months. So, this you have to remember. These securities are no longer in existence. Tax-free government securities. See, I have explained in the diagram also. Now, the word tax-free is used in securities to mean that interest on these securities is exempted from tax under section 1015. Section 10, you know that exempted incomes. So, tax-free government securities. Now, the government is not issuing these type of securities. See, in the diagram also I have explained government securities tax-free meaning it's exempted from tax. You don't have to consider that for computation. Now, less tax securities, most common form of securities. So, this either government will be issuing or companies will be issuing. So, it is possible in the government sector and from the company side also. From the interest due to the investor, tax is deducted at source by the issuing authority. So that is what you have to remember. Tax will be paid by the company or the government issuing the security. SSC has to pay tax on the gross interest. So here you have to remember that when you have to do the grossing and all, I have explained in the diagram. When I will do the problems, again I will explain that. Now, this is important. Deductions under section 57. So any deduction for income from other sources, it is explained under deduction under section 57. So, these are the items. In case of dividends and interest, actual amount spent as commission or collecting charges. This is an usual adjustment. Bank, he has collected dividend through bank and collection bank charge 200 rupees is collecting charges. 
it's an allowable deduction next is repairs depreciation and insurance of let out machinery with or without building so if these are all rare items that will come in your question but you have to remember that let out machinery repairs is allowed depreciation is allowed and insurance is allowed now third is deduction in if the contribution by the employer to the provident fund or employee state insurance fund see sometimes if provident fund contribution or state insurance fund this will be taxed in the under the head income from business or profession so if it is not taxed under business or profession it will come here it will be allowed as a deduction here you have to remember the rule in income tax only one section or one head of income only one deduction can be claimed you cannot claim in different heads of income so one deduction if you are claiming only under one head that's why i told you if this deduction is claimed in the business or profession computation by the ssc then here he will not get the deduction if it is not claimed there he can claim it here now standard deduction this is very important for family pension standard deductions out of family pensions so this deduction is an amount equal to 33 and 1 by 3 percent of such pension or 15000 whichever is less so you have to remember that see family pension family pension is see the in the case of a father or husband working in the government sector while he will die in service or even after his retirement when he after his death his family members so the fam children and the wife will continue to get that so if the daughter is of 18 after 18 years she is not eligible to get son after 21 years they are not eligible to get but the wife till the death she is eligible to get the family pension so the deduction what they will get is 33 and 1 by 3 percent of such pension or 15000 whichever is less so we have to calculate that this is important for two marks standard deduction for family pension now next is deductions from any other income interest on loan taken to acquire an asset or purchase shares so this is important even if you are not getting any dividend you can take a loan to purchase shares so then that you can claim as a deduction so up to 10 lakhs you can claim that's the best best thing up to so any amount taken for by the shares you can claim as a deduction here now deduction in respect of royalty by others in the case of royalty you can claim any expenses see wifi expenses you can claim then what you can claim proofreading charges you can claim typing charges you can claim that uh, if a uh, typist is typing her charges um, buying the reference books all this related expenses you can claim so royalty can be claimed deduction can be claimed by the authors next is deduction regarding interest on compensation or enhanced compensation such a, that is a deduction equal to 50% of such income is allowed see for example in the case of a motor accident uh, the court is deciding one compensation they have to get so deduction regarding interest on compensation see sometimes court will allow with interest they have to if delayed payment is there meaning they will always court will always has to pay the bank interest so interest on compensation or sometimes they are enhancing whatever compensation received or allowed by the court is not satisfied then the person ssc will go to the higher court and get a better or increased compensation so then a deduction equal to 50% of such income is allowed in that case now gifts i am going to explain types of gifts we are dividing into two first one is gift of property and gift of money so gift of property again we are dividing into gift of immovable property and gift of specified property other than immovable property so types of gifts also we have to learn this question one or two items will be there in the full problems so this is important now monetary gift what is the meaning if an amount exceeding rupees 50000 is received from any person without any consideration it will be treated as income from other sources so if you are getting a more than 50000 from a person without consideration without consideration meaning say for example if a one transaction is between both the parties then payment will be there without any consideration if they are receiving money more than 50000 it will be taxable now aggregate amount is considered for tax liability even if you are getting from more than 3 4 people and the amount is exceeding 50000 that will be taxable gift includes it can be cash check draft fixed deposit national savings certificates anything different forms of giving now gift may be received from one person or more than one person that i already told you sometimes you can see in the question three four people are giving gift so that also the aggregate amount we will take not one person individually the total amount what he received as gift now gift of property this is gift of immovable property received without consideration is considered as gift 
property who will give the property either parents will give or grandparents will give or at the time of marriage wife's family or husband's family like that it is a gift so here if somebody is giving without any blood relation they are giving means it will be considered as a gift now stamp duty value of the property will be the value of gift how they will evaluate what is the value of the gift the stamp property stamp duty value whatever stamp duty now government is systemized so they have the system to calculate all these values and everything is in place everything is computerized so it's not possible to cheat also they can get the correct value by referring the records of the government immovable property refers to land building or both so it can be immovable property meaning it can be a land or a building or both now stamp duty value of 50000 is applicable for the value of each gift received so stamp duty value they will consider 50000 these are all theoretical explanations you will not expect this in the uh, question problems so just i am giving for explanation if inadequate consideration is paid taxable amount will be the difference between actual stamp duty and the consideration paid see sometimes what they will do if they will show the actual value they have to pay the full tax so to reduce that they will show the less value so if they will come to know about that they will calculate the difference and you have to pay tax for that 80 lakhs property see in the papers stamp duty they are showing only 60 lakhs so the 20 lakhs will be black money so that is not allowed actually they have to show that 80 lakhs itself in the original documents if they if they will come to know that 20 lakhs they will consider it as gift and they have to pay tax for that now immovable property includes the following shares and securities it can be shares and securities it can be jewelry archaeological collections rare collections and all it's very expensive now drawings paintings sculptures any art of work and bullion jewelry coins anything like that now meaning of relative who can be a relative because gift from a relative is exempted so here spouse of an individual husband or wife so they can be relative now brother or sister of the individual that is also allowed brother or sister now brother or sister of the spouse of individual wife's brother or sister own brother or sister or husband's own brother or sister now brother or sister of either of the parents of the individual so that can be parents brother or sister of either of the parents of the individual father or mother now any lineal ascendant or descendant of the individual that is within the family same blood so anybody is there that also will be relative any lineal ascendant or descendant of the spouse of the individual in the case of husband and wife the same blood relation the same family tree now exempted items of immovable property car is exempted then furniture is exempted household equipments that is exempted uncle and auntie are not included in the definition of relative because usually just by calling uncle or auntie so that will not come as a relative relative meaning they either parents or grandparents own sister own brother we have seen the definition now clothes it will not come as immovable property cash gift from employer if is treated under the head salary and not income from other sources this i have explained when i explain the income from salary also gift cash gift from employer is treated under the head salary so that will be taxable and not income from other sources gift through will is exempted see parents can write a will and give the property to the children or grandchildren grandparents can also do that husband and wife it's possible they can give it to the children it's allowed now marriage gifts are exempted so marriage gifts are exempted and people are making use of this exemption so whatever valuables and all they can give at this time now gift in kind is exempted if you are giving anything in kind instead of cash then also it's exempted so there are many loopholes in this act and government is central government is seriously thinking of amending this act now tds for individual i told you 10% and 30% are the rates you have to remember so you have to remember two rates earlier it was decimal values and all it was very difficult now it's very simple to remember 10% and 30% you have to remember for computation so interest on securities issued by local authority or statutory bodies 10% listed debentures of a company 10% unlisted securities 10% bank interest 10% tds casual income 30% so here you have to remember that anything see any interest two rates only if you remember anything dividend or interest it's 10% casual income like uh, crossword puzzle lottery income anything like that it's 30% these two rates you remember you can do the problems so surcharge at the rate of 15% of tax will 
shall be levied if total income exceeds rupees 1 crore. Now, no TDS is possible. Uh, TDS is not charged in the case of interest on government securities deemed dividend. Deemed dividend meaning dividend is not received. It's only an assumption. Now, interest on any security notified under section 193. These are only theoretical explanation. Just interest paid to an individual in an account pay check for an amount exceeding 5,000 by certain companies. So, this is also just a theoretical explanation. Interest paid to an individual in account pay check for an amount exceeding 5,000 by certain companies. So, if it's account pay check, so that is certain companies. So, 5,000 rupees account pay check, you have to see that. No TDS will be there. Now, dividend from an Indian company is exempted under section 10. So, from exempted income onwards, we are repeating this again and again. Now, bank interest credited or paid up to 10,000. Up to 10,000, you don't have to pay the TDS. Now, raise, uh, raise winning, if it's up to 5,000, there is no TDS. Now, winnings from lotteries, if the amount is not more than 10,000, there is no TDS. No TDS in case of betting. For card games, if the amount up to 10,000. So, these are all you have to remember when no TDS. Sometimes they can ask for two marks. So, it's easy to remember also. So, this is the theoretical explanation I want to give for income from other sources. And it's very simple explanation. And one more module we will do with the problems, then this chapter will be completed. Then we will go to computation of gross total income and the deductions from the gross total income. Now, we have come across, I am completing both the two modules. That is semester 1 syllabus and semester 2. Two syllabus. So, the full syllabus income tax syllabus I am covering and uh, you can see in my educational video YouTube channel Alice Money educational videos. So, you will get the complete syllabus. So, that is the advantage income tax complete syllabus. So, the difficult subjects I am going to put that in my video and it will be really helpful for your learning. So, when online learning you are going through online learning it's very good because you can see the videos and you can see the you can do this, you can learn this problem in a systematic and a simple way. So, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Give me a valuable feedback. I will reply to you. I will get in touch with you. If you have any clarification, I will share all the details in that. Okay. Thank you.